since doing that interview last night, literally, oh uh, gosh, 18 hours ago, uh, the situation in Iraq has gotten even worse. The ISIS, which we will talk about with Mark Leon Goldberg, uh, has since moved from Mosul and is headed to Baghdad. Uh, it's unclear at this point where uh, their forces are. They have obtained weapons, U.S. weapons that were left by the Iraqi army, uh, including helicopters, which apparently they have the ability to fly. Uh, and they are uh, marching on Baghdad. It's unclear how far away they are, maybe an hour or two. They haven't reached Samara yet, which is a, a town uh, about an hour outside of uh, Baghdad. They have since... Uh, over the past week, they've taken Mosul and Tikrit, which, of course, was Tikrit is where Saddam Hussein was from. Uh, you will learn more about who these people are in this interview. And uh, also, I should say, in terms of recent developments, the Peshmerga, which is the fighting force of the Kurds in the north. Uh, the Kurds are more or less... Not fully sovereign, but they are autonomous. And um, they have taken Kirkuk, which is a city that they have longed to take. Um, it has a tremendous amount of oil reserves. And while the, uh, the in the sort of after the fall of uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, they got a lot of oil um, fields. Kirkuk is a huge prize for them both in terms of oil and in terms of their, I guess, national identity. And I think we should get used to saying national identity because I think um, the, the idea of an independent Kurdistan seems to be... It's somewhat already functionally the case. It's functionally the case, but I think we're going to see something, uh, you know, in the coming days, weeks, months. Um, the Iraqis are go heading to the UN to ask for air support. Uh, it, a story came out today that they have asked in the past for U.S. air support and drone strikes. Um, up to this point, we haven't uh, considered that. Uh, I, or um, I should say haven't acquiesced to that uh, request. There's a lot to be said that I wanted to, to talk about today because this is a massive cluster F, if you have kids listening. And this was what was predicted 11 years ago, 11 years ago in a couple of months. And... All those people who um, had signed on to this war from lawmakers of both parties, although, yes, I think it was the majority of Democrats voted against it in the Senate anyways, um, and people like Thomas Friedman, who, uh, you know, I'm probably, uh, on the three to six show today, I probably will get this out of my system. I was not planning to talk about Iraq uh, to that to this extent, but um, I, I, the, uh, I'm uh, pretty angry about this. And um, it really is just a horrible disaster. We have, it appears created the equivalent of Afghanistan when the Taliban took over pre-9-11. Uh, Except it, in some respects, this group already has the kind of 
global orientation that the Taliban didn't necessarily That's right. have to begin with. I That's mean, it was right. A huge problem in Afghanistan, but not necessarily globally. This men- mentality in this. The, group, it's almost as if we have created literally an Al Qaeda state. But that said, the this uh, group is considered more extreme than Al Qaeda. In fact, Al Qaeda, they are now at war with Al Qaeda in Syria. Um, uh, you know, as a function of they are, they have designs on a caliphate. And if you look at a map of Iraq, I think Mark Leon Goldberg and I discussed this. If you look at a map, you can see what the what the country is. It may or may not include Baghdad over the next week or two. Um, there's plenty of uh, blame to go around for this um and you could stretch back i guess to post world war ii in some respects but everything we are seeing today is a direct result not of mistakes that we made in the course of invading or occupying iraq it's not garner's fault it's not Bremer's fault. It's not the surge's fault. It's not the bathification's fault. It's not a function of being unable to convince Maliki to bring the Sunnis in to the fold. It's not a function of President Obama not being able to have the ability to convince the Iraqi parliament to okay an extension of the American occupation. It is none of those things. This is the inevitable result of that invasion and occupation. The moment we launch those bombs for shock and awe, this was more or less written in stone. The details had to be worked out. But the idea that democracy would flourish, that we could destroy the institutions of a country and then expect it to rebuild in five or 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 years and rebuild in such a way that wouldn't create sectarian strife and a civil war was always a fantasy or a lie. And it's not President Obama's failure to fund uh, the right elements of the Syrian rebellion early on would that have made a difference in the short term? Who knows? But inevitably, we were going to get to this place. And now America has turned the page. We have killed hundreds of thousands of people directly, maybe hundreds of thousands of more indirectly. And there's no reason to believe it's just going to end there. I mean, this is Turkey may get involved here. Iran and Saudi Arabia and Qatar are all involved in a proxy war. Major Turkish diplomats have been uh, kidnapped, uh, I believe. And also, the I mean, the other bizarre paradox of this is Rouhani is basically saying, yeah, Iran might actively get involved. And that would mean that if we get involved, we would be absolutely on the same side of this equation in Iraq. We would be fighting against exactly the same people. I, I, I mean... In terms of... Ir- they don't like... they. These are Sunni extremists going right. after Shia. Right. And we would be on the same side be, as, as uh, like the Iranians. Just we were in 2002, in 2001 to 2002 in Afghanistan, and we didn't use that as an opportunity to do something with Iran. But maybe it'll be different now. But yeah. it's just amazing the way all this it's circles... Just, just a, it's just a disaster. 